I've opened up Cowman. Now I will open our Color Cube 3D LUT workflow. Now that our Color Cube workflow is open, we're going to go hit Next and start to connect to our hardware. The first thing we're going to do is connect to our meter. We're going to click Find Meter, select the correct COM port. I went and I checked in Windows Device Manager and the Klein K80 is showing up as COM5. So I'm going to select COM5 and make sure that I have Klein Instruments meters selected as a checkbox here. I will hit search. And now I will make sure I have the correct meter mode selected. I'm going to select LCD LED, which is white LED, which is the type of backlight that this display has. Now for source. I'm going to search for our Virtual Forge software. I'm going to select Manufacturer, SpectraCal, Model, Virtual Forge, hit Search, select our machine, hit Connect. For pattern size, I'm going to switch it to full 100%. On most LCD displays, that's the correct one. The only time I would use a window pattern is for a plasma CRT or OLED. For our 3D LUT device, Calman cannot talk directly to the AJA LUT box. So essentially we're gonna write a file out and then load it with AJA's tools. So we're gonna to connect to our cube generator which generates that uh, corrective 3D LUT file and writes it to our machine. We're gonna select Manufacturer SpectraCal. Select Cube Generator 3D LUT, hit Connect. Now I'm going to come up to our Cube Generator tab. And under File Format, I'm going to select AJA LUT Box. I'm going to hit Next. This is where we define our standards. By default, we set it to Rec. 709 and BT1886 which we're going to calibrate this particular monitor to. So I will go to Next. Now this is our pre-calibration measurement page where we take the measurements to see what the display is doing before we perform our calibration. I'm going to go to the Read Series button. And it's going to take a series of measurements. And this will take about a minute or two, so we'll come back in a second. Now that our measurements are done, we're going to hit Next, and we're going to look for the four green dots. One of them is red, which is our white delta E. We want to go and improve that before we build the 3D LUT, because we want the 3D LUT to kind of smooth out everything and not make really large adjustments that can introduce artifacts that are visible. So instead of going to Calibrate Cube 3D LUT, we're going to go to Optimize Display. So the first thing we do is figure out which is the best preset. On some displays, they'll be like movie, dynamic, standard. In this particular LCD TV, we've selected the custom mode because it gives us the most uh, adjustments. So since we already know that, we, d we really don't need to run this measurement. But I'll just show you an example of what the measurement shows. It will measure the fully saturated green. And essentially, you just want to make sure it's not way undersaturated inside the triangle. Uh, when you're building the 3D LUT, you won't either want it at the target or outside. This is fine. We go to Next. And now we're going to measure the gamma and the, the white point. And re remember on that previous page, our white delta E was the only problem that Calman saw that we need to fix before we bu build the 3D LUT. So we're going to run Read Series. And we can see our white point is between 7500 and 8000 K and we want it more close to 6500 K. I'm going to go into the menu of the display and adjust the color temperature. I'm going to pick a different preset. By default the custom mode on this display has the color temperature of normal. Sometimes they'll be labeled normal, warm, and cool or they will be labeled with the actual color temperature numbers like 6500, 7000, 9300, etc. So I'm going to switch it from normal to warm one, and we'll remeasure. 
in warm one seems like it's much closer. Let's measure warm two just to make sure that that wouldn't be a better preset to start with. So it looks like warm one will be the best one to start with. We go to next. Now this is our dynamic range page. This makes sure we're not clipping near the highlights, the above white, and we're also measuring what our peak luminance value is. So we hit read series. And this is what clipping above white looks like. Now this isn't the display doing that. This is the AJA LUT box. It essentially clips above and below, just the physics of how it works. So this isn't anything to be alarmed at, but this is kind of a good thing to see what it would look like if you were getting clipping in the display. Now if the display was causing this, you would reduce the contrast in, until the clipping went away. And essentially what, what it would look like if it wasn't clipping is all these lines would continue all the way up to this area instead of plateauing off. Now our Y max value in nits or CDM squared is 156. What we want to target is 100 nits for reference viewing. So I'm going to essentially lower the backlight control on this LCD until that brings it down to 100. So I'm going in the menu right now. I'm lowering the backlight. I'm going to do another read series, which is now it's down to 108 nits. I'm going to lower it a little bit more. I'm going to do another read series. and we're right at around 100. One thing to note is building the 3D LUT probably will reduce the luminance slightly. So I'm gonna actually increase the backlight one more notch just so we have a little room to come back down towards 100 when we build the 3D LUT. Let's measure it one more time. Now we can go to next. Now we're going to do the two-point white balance controls. I'm going to do a read series to see where we're at. There's two charts here. The one on the left is the RGB balance for the high and low. This represents the high or for white, and this uh, represents the low or the gray patch. What we want to see is all three bars, red, green, and blue, even at 100 for the high and the low. And be aware that these, these two controls are interactive. So when you adjust the high, it will affect the low slightly. So you sometimes have to go back and forth to get them both uh, as accurate as possible. On the second graph, this is our delta E chart. We're trying to reduce this as low as possible. We want to try to get it under one. My preferred method is I'll select the patch down here, and then I usually go into a read continuous mode like this, and it'll constantly read the 100 over and over. Now, I'm gonna bring up the menu on the display, so it's probably gonna go crazy for a second while I, I get to the white balance controls and it's reading the actual menu. Okay, I'm in the white balance, two-point white balance controls. This particular display, the controls are named gain and cutoff. Gain is the high. Um, different manufacturers call them different. They might be labeled cuts and drives, or gains and offsets, or drives and offsets. Um, You'll just have to kind of figure out which uh, of the names apply to your particular display. So I'm going to bring down the red gain. And as you can see, it's coming down. And you can see our delta E is at 0.4, which is totally not visible error to the human eye. Oh, the menu popped back up. That's why it jumped up again. So if I exit out of the, all the menu, you can see that it's, it's back to where it was. Okay, now we're going to do the lower one. I usually like to, after I dial in the high one, do a read series to see where both of them are at. You can see there's still some visible error in the lower one. We have this cool new feature where if you hover over a delta E chart, it'll show you the target and actual measurement and see if it's a visual error to you we definitely want to improve the lower one. I'm going to select the low patch down here, 
and then switch to read continuous. Now I'm going to bring up the menu again so the charts are going to go crazy for a second until I actually get to the part of the menu where I can adjust it, which I am now. I'm going to reduce the red cut. Okay, now I'm going to get out of the menus. I'm going to stop it. Now you can see both are under a delta E of 1. I'm going to reread it just because the adjusting the low could have affected the high, so I'm going to read read it reread a series so we read them both. Now they're both under one, so that's what we want. Now we're on the page where we measure a contrast ratio. I'm going to run a read series. Okay, we're going to go to next. Now it's going to take us all the way back to the beginning where we're going to remeasure the display and then we're going to go to the page where it gives us the the four dots, the green or red, go, no go. So I'm going to do a read series. Now it's going to take a minute or two, so we'll come back after it's done. Okay, now that our measurements are complete, we're going to go to the next page. Okay, now we're on our performance analysis page and all four are green now. So now we can go to the process of actually building our 3D LUT. We're going to go to Calibrate Cube LUT and we're going to skip the 1D ramp page and go directly to the Calibrate 3D Cube. Now this particular display, we've done some testing and it does not perform very well with the Lightning LUT. So we're actually going to do um, a 3,000 point IRP LUT on this particular display. Now it doesn't hurt to try the lightning LUT on every display because it only takes less than five minutes and you might get really, really good results. So it never hurts to try that. So now we're going to go to our AutoCAD button. We want to make sure we have AJ LUT box as the file format selected. I'm going to change the name of our output 3D LUT so then we can recognize what the name is. I'm going to name it LUT Box Webinar Save. I usually name it what the display is and what the color space is. Um, that's what I suggest. And right here, this is our pattern delay optimizer. What this does is when Calman sends the signal to the pattern generator, which is in this case Virtual Forge, there's some latency before it's rendered on the screen, depending on this case we're going through a LUT box and you don't know what the delay time in the display is between when it receives the signal until it's rendered. So we have this thing called our pattern delay optimizer because we want to tell Calman to wait a fraction of a second before it tries to take a reading. And when you're using a meter like the K10, which is really quick, this can become a problem if the pattern is only half rendered on the screen or it's still showing the previous patch. But if the delay is too long, you're just wasting the extra time, which can add up when we're going to read 3,000 different points. So I, I suggest running this optimize button. It takes a series of readings and automatically determines what the optimum delay is for your particular setup. So I'm going to run that now. It will show a series of magenta and green patches. We'll come back after it's done. Okay, so now our pattern delay has optimized at 0.75. So I want to switch this to IRP point based. I'm going to set this to 3000. And I'm going to hit enter and it's going to start. So we will be back after it runs through its 3000 patches and uses that data to calculate our corrective 3D LUT. Now that our 3D LUT's complete, we're going to load it into the LUT box using the AJA Mini Config Utility. I'm going to go up to the menu bar and select 3D LUT and go select Write to Slot A. I'm going to select our LUT. Now I will go to Enable 
with our that's our LUT right there that we just put it on. Now I'll go to the next page where we will verify our LUT. I'm going to run the read series and then we'll be back in a minute or two after we get the results. Okay, we're back and you can see we got excellent results, a grayscale delta E average of 0.8 and a color checker delta E average of 0.6. These are excellent results. This will be a great monitor for your clients to view their content on and you won't have any discrepancies between your grading monitor and this monitor.